right, we're going to be wrapping up our week five videos with a quick discussion about uh, frame adjustments and a couple of kind of important uh, adjustments that will move the optical center of a lens. So we're going to be discussing uh, tilt in this video and uh, face form. Now tilt includes panto, retro, and ortho. So in the pantoscopic tilt or panto that we have listed here, we can see that the top or brow side of the eye wire is out away from the patient's face. The bottom eye wire is tucked in towards the patient's cheek. And that then in turn, this angle between the front of the eye wire and the temple is more closed. Our angle is more closed, so we have a smaller angle and we've accomplished this uh, adjustment by bending the temple down. And that adjustment is usually done right here where the hinge is or where the temple attaches to the eye wire. This particular connection is often called the end piece. So the end piece. So again, panto is brow out cheek tucked in, and then we accomplish that by bending the temple down uh, at this area right here, the end piece. Our retroscopic angle or tilt shows that the brow portion is tucked in close to the face. The cheek um, area of the eye wire is actually pushed out away from the face and uh, the angle then between the frame front or the eye wire and the temple is quite a bit more open. Uh, we have a larger angle here. Um, this particular adjustment is accomplished by moving the temple up, again, making that adjustment in most cases at the end piece. We have our orthoscopic angle or uh, what is actually considered uh, no angle at all. This is at the 90 degree. So there is no tilt on the front of this eye wire. It is completely perpendicular to uh, the temple. So a 90 degree angle. Um, and uh, we should have even um, distance away both at brow and cheek of this particular eye wire. Now, panto and retro are important to understand because each of them does something a little different to uh, the adjustment of a pair of glasses. Uh, so let's go through uh, each of these. We'll start with panto. Uh, so pantoscopic tilt um, actually does a couple of things um, that seem a little counter. Um, number one, they actually raise the optical center of a pair of glasses or appear to raise the optical center. So if you had a patient uh, whose eye was sitting uh, closer to the top third of the glasses and they were experiencing some visual difficulties, um, adding pantoscopic tilt by bending the temples down at the end piece could raise that optical center to a position that might be more optically comfortable for your patient. One of the other fixes that Panto will help us tackle is if a patient feels that their bifocal is too high because it actually feels like it lowers a bifocal or a multifocal. Um, we're just talking about that segment. So if we have a lined multifocal patient um, and we uh, add pantoscopic tilt uh, to their glasses, it's going to tuck that line kind of 
more out of their line of sight and make it less obvious. So it raises uh, the optical center, but uh, feels uh, like the bifocal is lower. Um, so those two things uh, do feel sometimes a little counter uh, to each other. Now, then in turn, uh, retroscopic uh, tilt kind of does uh, the opposite. So if we're in a situation uh, for some reason that we needed to, um, let's say, lower the optical center, or we needed to raise um, the patient's bifocal, we could add um, retroscopic tilt. Now, we may not need to completely make a frame retro. What we may want to do in a case is if we had very extreme pantoscopic tilt, we may want to remove a little bit of that. Now, we can accomplish this move um, by bending that temple up a little bit from its original position. Maybe we don't get rid of all of the panto, but we remove a little bit of it. Um, but it hasn't brought us all the way into retro territory where the bottom of the frame is out further uh, than the top of the frame. So we can um, decrease panto and accomplish some of the same things that we would uh, by um, a retroscopic um, adjustment. So in a retroscopic adjustment or the decrease of panto, uh, we are able to um, lower the patient's optical center or raise the segment. So we can help the patient um, better look through the optical center in the distance portion of the lens um, if we needed to lower it by decreasing panto or adding retro. We could also help to raise uh, the feeling of that segment in a multifocal um, by either, again, decreasing panto or adding retro. Um, this is movement of the temple up and that's done again at this connection or the end piece uh, where the temple uh, and the eye wire meet. So there is our tilt uh, discussion. Now face form uh, is another important adjustment that we make. Again, uh, face form will change the optical center and a pair of glasses or the PD um, and we look at face form in um, a couple different ways. So we have um, positive face form. So positive face form means that the glasses are kind of curved around uh, the patient's face. Uh, we have a positive curve. So it starts to kind of match the shape of our patient's head. So this would be positive face form. Um, no face form at all. Um, we've got a completely flat pair of glasses in comparison to our patient's face. Um, so there's no face form in this scenario. Or negative face form basically says that we've got um, a lens where the bridge is kind of pushed back and then each of the lenses are pushed out. Um, and then kind of away from our patient's face. So we've got, you know, kind of those outside edges way pushed out here. Um, this would be considered negative face form. Now, in our discussion about movement of um, PDs or optical centers, um, face form does play a part in that. Um, if in our original pair of glasses we have um, the optical center is placed um, over the patient's pupil. When we add additional face form, so when we curve that frame around, pushing the bridge out uh, and pulling the ends back towards the patient's face, we actually decrease the optical center. So we make uh, that same measurement if there was no face form 
shorter uh, when we wrap that frame around the front of the patient's face. Uh, in turn, uh, if we uh, did negative face form for our patient, uh, we actually would uh, increase um, the optical center or the PD measurement. Um, if you received, let's say, a job from the lab where uh, you had requested a PD of 62, um, but you received um, an optical center of 63, um, adding a little bit of positive face form may be the fix for uh, that small difference in um, optical center. Um, we could, uh, if we had a frame or a patient who was a little uncomfortable um, in their new glasses because of the face form, uh, usually changing that optical center, we could remove a little bit of that um, by taking some of that away. Uh, we wouldn't have to decrease it completely, but you could, you know, change that angle a little bit, make your patient a little more comfortable. Um, you know, without adding negative face form, this one looks a little funny. Uh, on a pair of glasses um, and usually is more caused, uh, the need for a negative face form is usually anatomically based. Um, maybe the patient's bridge or how their eyes, cheekbones sit, things like that. Um, but the first time you see a pair of glasses with negative face form, um, you'll uh, be able to quickly notice that because it is uh, quite different. Most glasses do have a small degree of face form in them. Let's go ahead and um, again just do a quick recap. So for face form, uh, we know that positive face form will uh, decrease an OC negative face form will increase an OC. And then in the category of tilt, panto, temples down, will raise an OC and uh, lower uh, the segment and retro or the decrease of panto uh, will lower an OC and raise a seg height. Adjustments are really critical to the way that our patients see out of our glasses. Having a good working understanding of movement in a frame and how that affects vision is super important to being an optician. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. Thanks for listening.